Hello everyone, my name is João Malato and I'm a second year PhD student under the supervision of Nuno Spulda and Luis Graça. I'm studying myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and today I'm going to present you results regarding my project funded by the FCT. These results are related to the impact of misclassification and subgrouping of patients and the power to detect disease-specific associations. MECFS is a complex disease where patients report unexplained and persistent fatigue that lasts for more than six months, or suffer from post-exertional malaise that is not alleviated by rest, among other clinical manifestations. The cause of the disease etiology remains largely unknown, but there has been evidence suggesting an autoimmune origin, namely when the disease is triggered by an infection. At the moment, there is no disease-specific biomarker that would help clinicians in the diagnosis. Instead, the diagnosis is mostly done via symptom-based diagnose criteria, while excluding known diseases that could explain either chronic fatigue or post-exertional malaise in the assessed patients. And having multiple different case definitions proposed for the disease generates some uncertainty around the respective diagnostic. Moreover, studies have shown that MECFS patients represent a very heterogeneous clinical population, and therefore some stratification of the patient should be conducted while doing research on the disease. In this regard, the most promising stratification is to divide patients with or without an infection trigger at the onset of their disease. To study the impact of misclassification or disregarding stratification on MECFS, we came up with a hypothetical case control association study with the goal being to investigate the effect of a putative risk factor on the disease. With this purpose, we assume that MECFS patients and their matched healthy controls are sampled in equal number and each cohort has a distinct probability of risk factor detection. Since our study wants to assess potential misclassification, we created a probability of misdiagnosing a putative MECFS patient. For our scenario, we assume these false positive patients are similar to the controls and there is no association between them and the hypothetical risk factor under analysis. The presence of misclassified individuals will change the overall probability of detection in patients, making the two cohorts more similar. By simulating multiple scenarios, we can calculate the overall power of the study, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, given that this hypothesis is indeed truly false. To value consistency, we delineated the study optimal power to be above 80% in order to ensure a high reproducibility in detecting the true association. Finally, we can define the probability of risk factor occurrence in healthy controls and the relative odds ratio for a higher probability for true NECFS patients, so we can actually see an association between the risk factor and the disease. And after running our simulations, we can see that as more false positive individuals are included in the patient's cohort, the lower the power goes. With misclassification, this power gradually trends towards the defined level of significance. Under different association scenarios, we ran multiple simulations with different sample sizes and saw that if more individuals are included in the study, the detected association improves. Oppositely, smaller sample sizes greatly reduce the study reproducibility, in this case not even reaching the desirable power threshold of at least 80% when going below 500 individuals per cohort. These smaller sample sizes are generally more usual to see in MECFS research. Furthermore, we varied the probability of risk factor detection in healthy controls and showed that higher probabilities present better results, as potential markers tend to be more easily comparable when present in larger fractions of the population. Finally, we simulated different values of odds ratios for the risk factor probability on true MECFS patients and saw that the overall power is highly reduced at lower odds ratios, even when the other parameters are within acceptable levels which tends to be the expected scenario in association studies without discernible biomarkers. To conclude, our analysis showed the importance of taking into account these practices, not only for MECFS-related research, but in a broader sense. We should strive to maintain good enough sample sizes, have detectable risk factors, and be mindful of misclassifications that may arise. Moreover, power studies should be a standard in research to better improve consistency and reproducibility of scientific reports. Thank you for your attention.